In the last video, I'd gone through an example of a snooping-based cache coherence protocol. And you'll recall that in that case, I had processors and caches. They had a shared memory system, and they all had a symmetric view of the shared memory system. And they were all accessing the shared memory system through a shared bus. Now, it turns out that this is a reasonable design choice if you're trying to connect, say, four processors or eight processors. But very soon, you know, having a shared centralized resource becomes a bottleneck, right? So if you try to implement a 64 processor system with a shared bus, you'll see that anytime you want to place a request on the bus, there's usually somebody else already waiting to use the bus. And so because of that contention, because of that queuing delay, this does not become a very good design approach. Okay, so usually when you're trying to design a large scale multiprocessor system, you want to move away from using a shared bus or a centralized resource. So let me show you an example of that kind of design style first. And once I've shown that, I will show you how to implement a directory based cache coherence protocol on this kind of multiprocessor system. So firstly, each green box over here shows you a processor connected to its private caches. When you have a miss in the cache, you have some local memory that you're directly connected to. So if you're lucky, you'll find data in your own local memory and you don't have to go out and visit the rest of the system. But if you don't find data in your local memory, then you need to figure out exactly where your data is placed. And then you need to send a specific point to point request to that particular node. OK, so this is referred to as one node. And you'll see that I have multiple nodes connected over here. And the connection is made with a scalable interconnection network, OK, which means this is not a bus. This is not a bus where I broadcast things and everybody sees everything I'm doing. But this is a scalable network with lots of point to point connections, right? So you could have a point to point connection between these two. These two could have a point to point connection. These two could have a point to point connection. And with the ring, you can connect the last node to the first node. So now if my data is sitting over here, right? So let's say that this processor is trying to do a load of X into something. Okay. And let's say that X works out to a certain address, let's say 1.5 gig. It turns out that each memory over here is storing exactly one gigabyte worth of memory. So addresses zero through one gigabyte are placed in node one. Addresses one gigabyte to two gigabyte are placed in node two. Addresses two to three gigabyte are placed in node three and then three to four gigabyte are placed in node four. Since I'm trying to access address 1.5 gig, I have a network interface unit over here that says this is not in my local memory. This is an address that I know sits in node number two. So let me send a point to point message from here to node number two. And there's a network interface over here which receives that request and says, yes, I do have that data sitting in my local memory. So let me go to address 1.5 gig, get the data from here and then send a cache block back to the requesting processor. Okay, and you'll see that in this transaction, it's only these two processors that were involved, right? There was no broadcast message sent in the network. And so processor three and processor four had no idea that this transaction was happening. Okay. And previously, you know, when we were broadcasting things, we said that since every processor knows what's happening to everybody else, you can all self manage your own caches. But in this case, that's not possible, right? So if there was a cached copy sitting here and somebody else was writing into X, there's no way for this cache to magically know that something is happening to X, right? So you, you need some other agent to figure out that somebody is modifying a block and inform all of the other shared copies. And so this is the basis of a directory based cache coherence protocol, where there is a centralized directory in some sense that knows the, st the state of a block and all transactions have to go through that directory. Okay, so let me go through a detailed example to show you exactly how that works. Okay, so we've already said that X has an address of 1.5 gig. So X is sitting here in this memory over here. And corresponding to every block that is stored in that memory, there's also a directory that is stored down here. Okay, so there's a directory for X, which says maybe that the block is in shared state. And right now there are no sharers. That means nobody has currently requested X and put X into their cache. Okay, so now P1 comes along. It does a load word from X into some register. It looks up its caches, does not find a copy of X. And so the network interface over here says, I know exactly where X is. So I'm going to send a point to point message here and say, I'm trying to read X. 
So now you get the value of x from memory. You look up the directory and the directory says it's in shared state, perfectly fine to go ahead and read this block. And so the value of x is sent back to processor 1. And the directory is updated to say that processor 1 is now in my list of sharers. That means block x is possibly in shared state in processor P1. Then let's say that P4 comes along, tries to also do a read of X, so trying to load X into some register, looks up its cache, has a cache miss. The network interface says, I know exactly where this data is, send it here, get the data from memory, and then that gets returned over here. The directory state is updated to say that there's a copy of X in both 1 and 4. Now let's say that P3 comes along and wants to write into X, right? So it's doing a store word into X looks up its cache, has a cache miss, and a request shows up here saying, I'm trying to write into X. So you get the value of X, and now you need to send it back to P3. But before you can give write permissions to P3, you need to make sure that all other cache copies have been invalidated. Thankfully, this directory knows exactly where the shared copies are sitting, right? So instead of doing a broadcast, you now send a point-to-point -point message to number one and to number four, saying you guys need to invalidate your cache copy of X. And so in this cache over here, X is sitting in shared state. In this cache over here, X is sitting in shared state. All right? so these cache copies are now invalidated. So they move from shared state to invalid state. And now they have to let the directory know that they have performed this invalidation. So they send back an acknowledgement saying, yes, you had asked me to invalidate, and I have performed that invalidation. The reason that you have to send back these acts is that because this is a general scalable network, you could have all kinds of packets flying around this network, right? And so you could be stuck waiting for some traffic on some congested path. And so because of that, the latency for the message transfer is unknown and unpredictable, right? And so when you send out an invalidation, previously when we were doing an upgrade request or a write request, we knew that, is, that in a single cycle, everyone connected to the bus is going to see that access, is going to see that request and invalidate themselves. But now you don't have the shared bus that you can use for a broadcast. You're sending out these point-to-point -point messages. Some message transfers may take longer than others, right? And the directory has to make sure that everybody has invalidated their cache copies before it lets P3 proceed with the write. Okay, so you have to send out explicit invalidations wait to collect these explicit acknowledgement messages. And once you've gathered all the acknowledgements, processor P2 is now going to send a message to P3 saying, I'm giving you permissions, you know, here's X, and here are the permissions that you need to perform the write on X. So now X gets placed in the cache, it's in modified state, and P3 now goes ahead with its write. Now, before I continue this example, let me clear out the screen. So as of now, we know that X is in modified state in P3. So even the directory has been updated after that last transaction. And X is now sitting in this cache in modified state. Now let's say that P1 wants to read X again, right? So it's doing a load word from X, looks up its cache, miss. The network interface sends a request over here saying that P1 is trying to read X. And the directory tells me that this is in modified state in processor P3, right? So, so the value of X here is not quite correct. So I need to forward this request to P3. And P3 now says, all right, someone else wants to read it. So I'm going to downgrade my status from modified to shared. And here's the latest copy of X back to the directory. Once the directory receives the copy of X, it's going to update the memory copy. So like before, when a block gets downgraded from modified to shared, that's a good time to also do a write back into the memory system, right? So the value of X gets updated and the value of X now gets forwarded back to P1. And so X gets placed here in shared state. And now the directory is updated. The directory now says that X is in shared state. It's with nodes one comma three. And similarly, you go through other transactions as well. And so all of that is mentioned on the slide over here, where I've gone through one detailed example. So P1 first does a read of X, does not find data in the cache, it's a miss. Read request is sent to the directory, directory responds. This is the new directory state saying X is in shared state in processor one. And in cache one, the block is kept in shared state.
when someone else does a read again you send a request to the directory directory response the directory state is updated now the block x is in two caches in shared state if p2 does a write of x it has the block but it does not have the right permissions so that's a permissions miss it sends an upgrade request to the directory the directory has to first invalidate the cache copy in p1 so it sends an invalidation to p1 p1 sends back an acknowledgement to the directory and then the directory sends the permissions to p2 and so if you look at the cache states p2 ends up having the block in modified state which means everybody else has that block in invalid state if p3 were to perform a write it's going to have a miss a write request is sent to the directory the directory realizes that that request has to be forwarded to p2 so the request is sent to p2 p2 now sends the data back to the directory who then forwards it back to p3 p2 has to downgrade from modified to invalid and now the block in p3 right so the directory gets updated where the block remains in modified state but is now owned by processor p3 if p3 were to later read the value of x that's a cache hit that causes no transactions on the network and then finally p4 does a read of x a request is sent to the directory gets forwarded to p3 p3 sends the data back to the directory downgrades from modified to shared that implies a memory write back and the directory finally sends a copy to to p4 so that also has the block in shared state and the list of sharers is now updated so this is how a directory based cache coherence protocol works